So let's continue with the second example. A single phase motor connected to a 400 volt 50 hertz supply is developing 10 kilowatts of power with efficiency of 84% and a power factor of 0.7 lagging. Calculate A, the input power in kilovolt amperes, that is the apparent power, B, the active and reactive components of the current, and C, the reactive kilovolt amperes, that is the reactive power in kilovolt amperes reactive. So how do we solve this problem? Now from the question, we have the source voltage given to be 400 volts. We have frequency to be 50 hertz. And we are being told that the single phase motor, which is connected to this voltage source, is developing 10 kilowatts of power with efficiency of 84%. Now what this primarily means is that the 10 kilowatts power generated by the single phase motor happens to be the actual output power and that is 84% of the actual input power. So we have the actual output power to be 10 kilowatts, the efficiency to be 0 0.84, that is if you want to divide this value by 100 and then the power factor to be 0 0.7 lagging now we know that the power factor is giving us cosine of the angle phi so that is equal to 0 0.7 so a we are asked to find the input power in kilovolt amperes that is the apparent power now to do so we first of all need to find the actual input power before we can find the apparent power. Now we know that efficiency is giving us the output power divided by the input power. So if you want to find the input power, then you are going to interchange the positions of these two values. So you have the input power, that is the actual input power, to be equal to the output power divided by efficiency. So that is 10 divided by 0 0.84 and that gives 11.905 kilowatts. So this is the actual input power. So now let's move on to find the apparent power that is in kilovolt amperes. So considering the power triangle, we have the actual power lying along the horizontal axis, the reactive power lying along the vertical axis, and then we have S to be the resultant, that is the apparent power. And phi is also the phase angle between the apparent power and the actual power. So from this triangle, we have S square equals P square plus Q square. Now let's call this equation 1. To find the value of P, P is giving us the apparent power times cosine of the angle phi. Now we have the value of P to be 11.905 kilowatts. We have the value of cos phi, which is giving us 0.7. So in that case, we can find the value of S. So S is giving us P over cos phi. Now we have P to be 11.905 divided by cos phi, which is 0.7. And that gives... 17.007 kilovolt amperes. So this is the value of the apparent power. B. We are going to find the active and reactive components of the current. 
So first of all, let's find the current and then we move on to find the active and the reactive components. Now the apparent power, which is S, is giving us the product of the supply voltage and the supply current. So that is V times I. Now we are given the supply voltage from the question to be 400 volts. And then we know the value of the apparent power. Therefore, we can find the value of the supply current. So the supply current I is giving us S divided by V. Now we have S in volts amperes to be 17,007 divided by V, which is 400. And then that gives 42.5 amperes. So this is the value of the supply current. Now from this value, we can find the active and the reactive components. This supply current can be expressed as IA plus JIR, where IA is the active part of the current or the active component of the current, and then IR is the reactive component of the current. Now, the active component of the current, that is IA, is giving us I times cosine of angle phi. Now we have the value of cosine of angle phi to be 0 0.7. And therefore, we are going to have 42.5 times 0 0.7. And that is equal to 29.75 amperes. So this is the value of the active component of the current. Now to the reactive component, that is given by IR equals... I times sine of the angle phi. Now we know the value of I, but we don't know the value of sine of angle phi. However, from trig, we know that cos square phi plus sine square phi is equal to 1. Therefore, we can transpose cos square phi to the right hand side so that we have sine square phi equals 1 minus cos square phi. And then sine phi is giving us the square root of 1 minus cos squared phi. Therefore, we have IR to be equal to 42.5 times the square root of 1 minus cos square phi. Now we have cos phi to be 0 0.7. So cos square phi is basically 0 0.7 square. So when you multiply 42.5 by the square root of 1 minus 0 0.7 square, you are going to get 30.35. Therefore, the reactive component of the current is 30.35 amperes. Now to see, we are asked to find the reactive power in kilovolts amperes reactive. So from equation 1, we have S square equals P square plus Q square. Therefore, we can say that Q square is equal to S square minus p square and then q is equal to the square root of s square minus p square now let's substitute the values of s and then p in here so we have s which is the apparent power to be 17.007 minus the actual power 11.905 so the square root of this value is going to give 12.145 
and that is in kilovolts amperes reactive now let's move on to the next example so for question 3 the potential difference across and the current in a circuit is represented by 100 plus J50 and 5 plus 2J respectively. Calculate the power and the reactive volt amperes. Now in this question, we are given the value of V which is the supply voltage to be 100 plus J50 and then we also have the supply current I to be equal to 5 plus J2 amperes. Now we are asked to find the actual power and the reactive power. So to solve this question we need to realize that the apparent power which is S can be expressed as the supply voltage times the conjugate of the supply current. Notice that all these three quantities here are complex quantities and S can as well be expressed as P plus JQ where P is the actual power or the real power and then Q is the reactive power. Now let's call this equation 1. Previously we said that the apparent power is giving us the supply voltage times the supply current. So why do we have S equals V times the conjugate of I for equation 1? Now in terms of power, what we are always looking for is the phase difference between the current and the voltage. Now from equation 2, let's assume that both V and I are all complex quantities. Now in that case, we can express V in the polar form as the magnitude of V polar theta V times for I, we also have the magnitude of I polar theta I. Now let's try to multiply these two values. So we are going to have the magnitude of V times the magnitude of I now for the phase angles we are going to add them so that's going to be theta V plus theta I now you realize that instead of obtaining the phase difference between the two signals here we have the phase sum now in order to get the phase difference we need to multiply V by the conjugate of I so if we have S equals V times the conjugate of I then we have V to be magnitude of V polar theta V times the magnitude of I remains the same however the angle becomes negative so that is negative theta I and then multiplying these two quantities we are going to have magnitude of V times magnitude of I and then for the angle we have theta V minus theta I and then this time we have the phase difference. So this is the main reason why we are going to multiply V by the conjugate of I. So let's try to find the apparent power. So we have V given in the question to be 100 plus J50 times I we have 5 plus J2 and then we are going to multiply that by the conjugate of I so this becomes 100 plus J50 times 5 minus J2 now let's multiply these two quantities so we have 100 times 5 which is 500 100 times negative j2 that becomes negative j 200 plus j50 times 5 becomes j250 and then we have 50 times 2 
that is 100 j times j is j square which is negative 1 and then negative 1 times negative we have positive 1 1 times 100 is 100 now let's simplify 500 plus 100 is 600 and then negative 200 plus 250 is 50 so we have plus j50 so this is the apparent power now comparing this to p plus jq you realize that we have p which is the real power to be 600 watts and then we have the reactive power to be 50 volts amperes reactive now given that s is equal to p plus jq if q is positive then it means that the circuit is inductive and the circuit consumes reactive power hence the current lacks the voltage also if q is negative then it means that the circuit is capacitive and then supplies reactive power hence the current leaves the voltage so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye